You might remember that we said Solidity has only integer types. No fixed point or floating types. Floating types actually come with some unexpected behavior due to rounding issues. So we shouldn't use something like that in security relevant things like smart contracts. But fixed point numbers are a potential solution. Here we just define a number that has an integer part and a fractional part. And then the behavior is never unexpected. Solidity itself does not have direct support for fixed point numbers, but it's fairly simple to implement something like that. So let's do that now. So in our project here, let's create a new file and let's call it whatlib.sol. And now we have, of course, the license identifier, the pragma statement. And now with the knowledge of how we can use libraries and also how to use structs, we can nicely implement a fixed point math library. And for that, let's declare a library. And let's call it Wartlib. And the reason we're calling it Wartlib is we're, because we're gonna use a multiplier. So let's call it UN256 public constant multiplier. And we'll use 10 to the power of 18. And this will basically indicate to us how many digits we want to use for the fractional part of the number. So here, this fractional part is basically how large this multiplier here will be. So if we're using 10 to the power of 18, this will give us the precision that we can have in our fixed point number. And the reason we're calling all of this here whatlib is because for some reason this is called a what with when you have 18 decimals. And you don't have to use 18 decimals like we're doing here. I guess it's just became the convention because we're already using 18 decimals in Ether and ERC20 tokens mostly. But in theory, you could use any amount of decimals that you want here. Some people use 27 even if you need even more and call it race. And there's nothing speaking against using less as well if you don't need that much precision, you might as well use less here. But we're just going with 18 here. And the way this will work is basically, you multiply a number with this multiplier here. And that new number basically represents a fixed point number, where the first part is the integer part and the second part the fractional part. And you multiply it or divide it with the multiplier here to then get the actual number again. Because remember, in Solidity, we can only work with these integer numbers and we have to represent basically the fixed point number as an integer number. So then in the library here, here itself, we can define a struct what and say un256 value. And this will just represent essentially when we use a fixed point number. In this case, we're calling this fixed point number what. And then we can define multiplication. So more what number and we'll define a pure function that returns a UN256. And then in the function itself here, we can do number times what dot value divided by multiplier. And so then basically anytime you multiply a normal number like this u into 56 number here with a what number. So this what number here will represent a fixed point number which has a much larger value because it has this multiplier in included. So then when you multiply a normal number with it and you want to get a normal number again, that is not a fixed point. Well, then you multiply this what number with this number and divide it 
with the multiplier to then not have a fixed point number anymore, but a normal one. And then similarly, we can just copy paste this and use it to implement a division function. So let's call it div word. And yeah, the same signature for the function, except this time it's the other way around where we actually want to divide by the fixed point number. So we're not dividing by multiplier, but instead we're dividing by this what dot value. And then that means the multiplier is now in the denominator, which means here we actually have to multiply now on this side. And now we can add several more functionalities to this library. Depending on your use case, you could add a function where you add two words together or you subtract them from each other. And I'll leave that up to you. But one function that we will be using in our stablecoin, and so we implement it now, is called from fraction. And it will basically take a numerator and a denominator. and also of course an internal pure function and it returns as a what struct. So, and in this function here, we'll first of all, if the denominator here is zero, well then that doesn't work, we're dividing by zero, so that we kind of have to specially uh, handle this case. And in that case, well, let's just return a zero watt. And otherwise, we can actually just return a new watt, which is numerator times multiplier divided by denominator. And now this will return us a new watt that has the multiplier included. And we can actually create it just from a fraction from numerator and denominator. And then Solidity also has an additional function. So Solidity actually has a new feature for this use case. I just wanted to show you the old way on how to use a struct, but there's actually a better way for exactly implementing this here where you don't need a struct and it's a little bit more gas efficient. And it's also nicer to read. And that is this custom type that Solidity has. And instead of defining it as a struct here, we can just say type what is UN256. So this is basically, you can just define this type here, which is actually just a UN256 type. And then we don't need memory anymore because it's now not a reference type anymore, but instead it's an actual number type which makes it more gas efficient as well. And then to use the type, what you'll use is here, when you multiply, you say what.unwrap. And this just will basically just use this value here, not changing it, but it will make the compiler not complain anymore. And so the same thing here, So now you have UN256 in the whole formula and the compiler doesn't complain. And on the other hand, if you want to create a new what, you say wrap. And that's it. Now we can use it in our stablecoin. And so in our stablecoin here, we will use it in the internal function, which was this get DPC in USD price. So actually here, if you notice, we are dividing total supply by surplus in USD. And the result is actually, because we're dividing, could be a fixed point number. So we're actually losing some if we're doing it this way. One solution would be, in all our calculations, doing this division as the last step always. But you can see it actually becomes really messy and we couldn't use a nice little function like this anymore and you would always have to change the formulas. But 
using fixed point numbers here is a nicer way to do it. And to do that, let's first of all import this whatlib we just implemented. And then in the top of our contract, we use this using for functionality. And we say using whatlib for a u and 256. So now this library will be available for the u and 256 type. And then here in this function, we will actually not return a u and 256 anymore, but instead let's return a what, which we can access with whatlib.what. .what. And then we can say whatlib. And now we're using this from fraction function we implemented. And we're not doing this dividing anymore, but rather passing it. And so the result of this will be a what now. So if we save it, obviously now we'll get a complaint because it's not matching the types anymore. So this is now a whatlib.what. .what. And now, of course, it's complaining here. And now we will use this mole what function we implemented, which is available on the UN256 type. So this msg.value is UN256. So we can, in fact, just do dot mole what. And now that's already the implementation because this mole what here will now divide again by the multiplier, returning us another u and 256 again. And we'll have to do the same thing here. And also use more what here. Okay, so now we've used some fixed point numbers in our contract. And this is actually now finished. There's only one minor thing that we'll add later on.